just like that. Wonderful. Okay, you should all see my screen. All right, well, I am reporting live from Paris, France, where I am happily um, working remotely here for the next, for this whole month of March, and it's been great. I've just had um, lots of opportunities to connect with the European community. I've already gone to Drupal Camp London and spoke there at the CXO event, and then I went to the German Splash Awards, where they were celebrating some really um, amazing case studies um, that were created for German clients and I'm getting ready to have a dinner with the French Drupal Association uh, next week and then go up to the Netherlands and participate in their Splash Awards. So um, it's just been a really great month and I eat in a Claire Chocolat every day. So that is my, that's my personal KPI. So before we begin, I just want to do a little housekeeping. Um, I ask that you just remain muted, uh, but if you do have a question, we want to hear from you and you can post it anytime in the chat window. Tim's going to help me monitor that. If you hear something you like, feel free to do a screenshot or tweet something out. Um, use the handle at Drupal Asos. And um, our agenda, so we'll just highlight some key news happening here at the Drupal Association, then go into our two main programs, DrupalCon and Drupal.org, and give you some updates. And I've asked Tim Lennon to join me so he can, um, as Director of Engineering, we, uh, I'd like him to give you a little more insight into our work on Drupal.org, so you'll hear from him after me. Of course, you're all our supporters, and we really need your support for funding Drupal.org, which is the community home, and lots of great things are happening there. So we can't thank you enough for deciding to give back to the project in this way. It really means a lot, and it clearly takes a lot of you to help us fund uh, Drupal.org. And so um, we try to provide the most value we can with this program, but we recognize that this was a choice that you made to help us fund the infrastructure. So thank you very much for your support. And now let's head on into Drupal Association news. You might have seen my very long blog post, um, which is about our 2018 execution plans. And I'd like to just walk through that very briefly and give you the highlights. But again, you can go on drupal.org slash association slash blog to find the uh, longer um, post that gives more detail about our 2018 execution plan. It also includes a dashboard of all of our projects with milestone and metrics, and we'll be reporting out on that throughout the year. Uh, the most important thing uh, about our execution plan is that our primary goal is to help grow adoption of Drupal 8 um, in our channels, Drupal, DrupalCon and Drupal.org. Um, there's a big, effort throughout the project to grow adoption in lots of different ways. And of course, we want to pull our weight in the areas that we can, which are those through those two programs. Um, and so as we were thinking about our work, we had some imperatives. One was to grow adoption, the association really needs to expand the personas that we serve. We've primarily been um, serving the builders and the builders who contribute back to the project. And that can't stop. We just need to do more because digital experiences require not just the builders, but the people that are deciding if they should use Drupal or not. There, it also includes all the marketing people who use this, the platform to get a business um, result. And so we need to talk with them as well. And we also need to talk with marketing because we're seeing that budgets have been swinging and more CMOs are making technology buys. So this is one area that we're focusing on as we think about our work is how do we talk to all these personas and help them choose Drupal and help them be power users of Drupal. And then of course, how do we help them find their own path into the community where they can contribute in their own unique way. The other imperative is that we wanna make it easier to choose Drupal. So uh, whether you're on Drupal.org or DrupalCon, how can we make it easier for someone to come to the site or come to the event and say, oh, I'm getting the information I need and I wanna move forward with my evaluation path. I wanna choose Drupal. So we're doing a lot of effort into that. And uh, we also wanna make sure that Drupal is as competitive as possible. And areas that we can help is um, finding ways to reduce total cost of ownership. We hear that as one area that we can improve. And so we're looking at auto updates and I'll talk some more about that. And that's really to help the mid-market. And then also ease of use. 
Um, we know a lot of people are not using Composer um, and the command line to build Drupal. And so we are gonna build a tool for site builders so that we can help them use Drupal 8 uh, in a way that's kind of more aligned with how they are used to working with Drupal. So our focus areas, we have four. One is to accelerate the adoption journey. We wanna inspire and inform evaluators starting to really amplify and get people excited about what Drupal's done for all kinds of great names out there. Um, we want to help create these resources that an evaluator needs so that they can be converted into users. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we want to improve the product where we can um, in those areas that I mentioned. The other focus area is we want to strengthen the user journey. And so this is really about helping people keep falling in love with Drupal, helping agencies like you um, have customers who, you know, retain your customers um, so they keep using Drupal. The third area is supporting community health. And there's lots of ways that we can do that, but it's mostly really expanding how we serve and who we serve so that it's more global, it has more personas, um, and uh, we just have a stronger relationship with the community, both, be, you know, bridging this gap between um, uh, Dries by Tart in the community and creating more opportunities for discussion, as well as uh, the Drupal Association in the community. And then lastly, we just want to build a stronger foundation of support for the Drupal Association. Of course, we want to make sure we have happy staff and um, they love working here and, and serving the mission. Um, but we also are gonna focus on organizational and financial health, um, because obviously as we need to stay sustainable to keep our um, community support sustainable. Uh, and again, just getting more ambassadors out there for Drupal and the Drupal Association. So this is the four areas, and here's a real simple heat map. Kind of look at the whole life cycle. You have the adoption part of the life cycle, and then they turn into users and they become community members. And I look at these three segments and um, you can see we're putting a lot of effort on the adoption side, a little bit on the user side, and uh, second priority is the community side. Um, primarily because we have some catching up to do on the adoption side. Uh, does not mean we're going to be reducing anything we do for the community. So let me just go through quickly some highlights of how we're going to be um, serving each of these three areas. Um, for our current customers, um, of course we'll have DrupalCon and that really is a user event and a, a community contributor event. It's really, you know, if you look at all the sessions there, it's really to help you be a power user. And um, so, you know, that, that doesn't stop. But one thing that's new is we want to know who our customers are. There's a lot that we can, um, a lot of insight we can gain if we know who our customers are, uh, what modules they're using, um, et cetera, et cetera. And today, the Drupal Association is not part of the sales process, so we don't know. However, every website is coming to Drupal.org. And by working with Drupal Core, we can um, uh, add some telemetry to Drupal 8, to Drupal Core, and be able to capture some information that can give us this insight. And then we want to work with the community um, in some new ways. Um, so I've talked about how we want to work with the community on product improvement. One is the auto updates initiative. Um, you know, when I talk with companies in the mid market, especially those that decided not to stay with Drupal, they say a lot of it's because talent's expensive and having talent doing manual updates is an expensive cost. And um, the mid market would really benefit from auto updates. And so the Drupal Association is going to work with um, Drupal Core and other community members in order to start this initiative up. And then also just a real fast, not fast, but a great way to um, grow Drupal adoption for Drupal 8 is to make it easier for site builders to use Drupal 8, um, especially those that aren't using the command line uh, for buildings. So that's why we'll have that tool for site builders that I mentioned before. Uh, we are also going to start having some roundtables starting at DrupalCon Nashville, and one will be a customer roundtable. Um, and I wanted to call this one out specifically. We, as the association, again, we don't have that relationship with customers, and we want them to be part of our community too. Um, so we've been reaching out to you as supporters to see if you have any customers that would like to spend two hours with us, getting to know each other but also getting to understand like what can we do um, as a group to help customers become part of the community and see how they can invest in um, 
Drupal's longevity in a way that benefits their business. Um, so that's the conversation we like to have, and it'll just be um, a peer-to-peer -peer networking discussion. And I hope it's the start of something much bigger. Um, and some other areas that we're focusing on is recognizing and rewarding community. So we know that nothing gets done without all of our volunteers and people do their volunteer work for many reasons. And one of them is for social capital, right? And, and just really being known and seen as, as someone who's stepping up and leading and they just wanna, they, you know, sometimes just a thank you really matters. And so we have the contribution credit system that right now gives you credit if you submit a, um, well, code, of course, but uh, Drupal 8 case study, or if you're a supporting partner. Uh, but we want to expand that to um, uh, another area, which are camp organizers. You know, as you probably know, camps are little marketing machines all over the world that are attracting developers and also onboarding people to be contributors. Um, it's a great meeting place for companies to start to decide kind of at the ground level if they want to use Drupal. And uh, it takes a lot of work to organize a camp um, or really any kind of community event. Uh, so we want to start uh, recognizing them and the team's putting some efforts in place to be able to do that. Um, and we're also looking to keep enabling the community. Last year, Tim and his team did a lot of work to assess uh, developer tools like GitLab and GitHub. Um, and we had to put that on hold uh, because we just found that it wasn't getting um, the features just weren't where the community needed them to be, so we weren't ready to migrate. But we're still exploring it as these tools evolve. Um, so I want to let you know we did not forget that. And we also hear a lot of um, interest in finding a way to fund project maintainers. And, um, you know, camps want fiscal sponsorship. And right now the DA can provide it for some camps, but we have some limitations, so we're looking to scale more globally. and. Um, we think a partnership with Open Collective could um, address some of these needs and allow people to collect money and, and um, spend that money as they need to in a very transparent and compliant way. And so we're exploring that partnership. Um, and then on the adoption side, um, this is really about getting those decision makers to say yes to Drupal. And again, since we haven't been part of the sales cycle, for us to do a great job in our channels um, talking to these to this audience, we want to first understand them. So we're doing user research right now. I'm very thankful for our board member, Annie Miller, who's taking the time to do these interviews and she's talking to personas throughout the entire life cycle um, to really understand um, what they think and what they feel and what they need in order to say, yes, I want to go to the next step. So really excited to start pulling that information together and having it eat, um, kind of drive the evolution of our programs. Um, and, um, you know, there's, I'll go into more detail, but again, I mentioned how we want to inspire and form these um, decision makers and really get them to move through the evaluation process quickly and really, frankly, connect them to you. <laughs> We're not gonna be able to sell them on Drupal um, and help build them anything. The most important thing is to have a conversion where they talk with you as trusted agencies who can deliver something really powerful for them. And then the last area is that Drupal Association support. So we've set up our KPIs um, from a financial perspective. We are doing um, better with our financial turnaround and we have uh, uh, getting ready to put out some blog posts about that for 2017. The results were really positive and we hit our goals that show us that we are moving through that financial turnaround and becoming much more sustainable, which means the project's becoming more sustainable, which is wonderful. And this year is going to be another important year for us. Um, so I'd say that we're not 100% done with um, this turnaround, but we are starting to walk out of those woods and we'll be doing it with you and your support. So thank you. I definitely envision us doing a fundraising campaign this year to accelerate adoption. Um, I'm seeing a lot of needs. I need to work with uh, the team and the community to scope that out, whether it is crowdsourcing funds to um, kill bugs to help people migrate from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, or it might be helping with documentation, um, or it could be about crowdsourcing or getting some extra marketing power um, to do some PR. 
so I'm just seeing a lot of things. I just need to work with the community to prioritize that and then launch a fundraising campaign so we can execute. Uh, and as you know, we want to keep building a um, strong relationship with the community, and we're just really thrilled to have Rachel Lawson on staff as our community liaison. And she is already starting to build a stronger relationship with the community. She's out there engaging with the community. You see her online answering questions, and she'll be doing a lot at DrupalCon Nashville um, and uh, going to BOFs and these special roundtables and facilitating them. So. Hopefully this kind of work um, in the different regions will make a real difference in building ambassadorship for the association. Um, and then just another area to point out is we always need to worry about compliance risk. And so uh, we're working for Drupal.org subsites to be GDPR ready. Uh, and right now we're working on all of our commerce sites uh, being PCI compliant. So those are important things. Just want to let you know we've got our eye on the right stuff. All right, and if there's not any questions at all, keep going. Another announcement uh, from the Drupal Association is that we uh, have new board members. Uh, terms are every three years if you're nominated. Uh, if you're elected, it's every two years. And um, we actually expanded the number of people on the board and it allows us to have more diversity specifically regional diversity, as well as diversity of perspectives, of different stakeholder perspectives on the board. Um, so we have Adam Goodman, who's our chair. Um, he is going to be with us through 2019. He's taking a seat that's a little truncated. Um, he, he's an interim chair, uh, which is why it didn't need to be, um, you know, a full three years. Uh, but his whole purpose is that he is a professor of leadership at Northwestern University. He's been advising us for years and he wants to help orient us um, to being a, a board, it's kind of taking it up a notch in strategic planning, um, as well as a board that doesn't have um, the founder of the project as the chair. And there's some just some changes that needed to happen around that. And so he's just advising and helping us put the right infrastructure in place for that. Dries, of course, is still on the board, um, but is in his founding director role, which gets renewed every year. The other board members are George Mathis, um, who is from uh, Johnson & Johnson. Adra Martin Merrick um, is in Scotland, and she is a customer experience advisor, has worked for companies like The Economist. Uh, Batty Breidert, sorry, that got truncated there. Um, she is in Germany and runs a digital agency there. And Ingo Rube is in Germany as well. He uh, is now the CEO of a startup, but he was recently, up until recently, the CTO of Berta Media. Many people know him as the person behind the Thunder distribution. And Michael Van Veld is a digital agency owner out of the Netherlands. Um, as you'll see, uh, we have lots of different kind of stakeholder um, interests represented here. But really, uh, it's very heav heavily skewed to Europe. We felt that we really needed to have more of a European voice on the board. And so we're just really excited to, to have them there. All right, let's go into some updates about programs, uh, starting with DrupalCon. Uh, we're really excited. It's gonna be here in less than a month, which is crazy, uh, but everything's coming together really nicely. Um, we just put out the new schedule, so go ahead and start making your plans. Um, one thing that you'll notice on the website that's new is we have Why DrupalCon. We wanted to make sure that as we have all this content for different personas that it's easy to find. Uh, so you can go to Why DrupalCon and start seeing what I call recipes um, for different personas. So you can get um, ideas of what to do for if you're an organization leader, maybe you're a director of engineering at AAA. Uh, digital teams. So whether it's digital teams at an agency or at an end user, there's all kinds of content for you. Um, this year we have um, content specifically for content editors, training, lab sessions. So please make sure anyone you know who's a content editor, uh, make sure they know this is available to them. We really wanna get them there. And then uh, of course, this will probably be the most interesting to you, but digital agencies, we have lots of content to help you as a digital agency, whether it's the business track or the business summit or um, different case studies to inspire you. And also some really great talks about um, what's happening in the marketplace. Um, so um, 
check that one out for sure. And then of course we have others, whether it's all kinds of content for building uh, decoupled solutions, some are technical in nature, some are talking about the, the solutions that are made through decoupled um, efforts. And then we have all of our case studies aggregated here. And then if you want to learn how to get involved with the community while at DrupalCon, whether you're a new community member, or a longtime community member, we've aggregated all of that information in this recipe. And then for new attendees, maybe you have a new employee going for the first time, they should check out the new attendee page so they can see all of the great um, ways that we make it easy for someone to get involved and feel really welcome. And we are promoting by personas as well. So you'll see that we're taking this content and tweeting it out. Um, definitely trying to start moving into this more persona-based marketing for our event. Some highlights that I thought that you as digital agency owners might want to know about are the supporter roundtable. Uh, you should have received an email to save the date Wednesday from three to five. It, this is an opportunity for us as the association to talk with you specifically about what are your needs? Um, you know, we are hearing a lot of different kinds of needs that the association might be able to help with. Um, and um, we wanna get aligned and we wanna find a way that we can invest in this together, um, especially in a way that doesn't defund Drupal.org. Um, but we're definitely hearing the need for some partnership here and we'd like to have that conversation with you. Uh, again, I mentioned the customer roundtable. That's Tuesday from 1030 to 1230. It's hosted by Mike Lamb from Pfizer, um, it's Director of Engineering at Pfizer. It's going to be a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. And I think it'd be really great for any customer to come to this um, and start finding who their peers are and asking some of those questions that keep them up at night and being with people like Mike who are true believers in Drupal. Um, but more than anything, it's that chance for us to hear how we can help them and help them become part of our community. Another thing that we're doing, um, thanks to Donna Benjamin, another board member, is we're going to be doing testimonial videos um, at DrupalCon. We wanna talk to everyone and get testimonial videos that can be turned into different kinds of sizzle reel on Drupal.org, on DrupalCon, really promoting why Drupal's so great or why the community's so great. And uh, we would love to find out um, if you would like to be um, videotaped. Um, I think videotape just aged me, but if you would like that, <laughs> uh, we would love to hear your story um, and your customer story and your staff member's story. So please be on the lookout. Uh, and also some, there's all kinds of special events happening at DrupalCon, but just don't forget the Monday opening reception. This is when we open up the sponsor, like the exhibit hall on the sponsor floor and everyone can come together and there's a lot of energy there. So I, I highly recommend you're there at your booth. Um, and then Wednesday after the supporter roundtable is the VIP happy hour. And this is um, a chance for us to say thank you. And you can do some, some final networking before the end of the day. It's um, a couple hours of drinks and light bites and good times. All right, and then let me just go over to Drupal.org and give you some sneak peeks. Uh, so we are working on improving the adoption journey, uh, starting at the front page, which is where we know evaluators are going to. And this is what it looks like today. You can see has all kinds of call to action and videos. This, this is um, thanks to Acquia. We're always looking for our partner's content. We don't have a team to create content. So we're very thankful when, um, when you can provide yours for the site to help with this evaluation path. Because we have news and all kinds of things on the site, um, but we know that it can be better and a more streamlined um, evaluation path. It's a and lot think, easier to choose Drupal. Do you have a yeah, question? To, no, this is Tim. I was just going to say to add on to that, one of the things that you can see immediately when you look at this page is that it's oriented towards the builders of, of all those personas that we've talked about and not to the additional personas that are really part of our 2018 focus. And so we have already done some data gathering to get some more information about who it is that comes to this front page and to understand better, um, especially the anonymous traffic uh, about who's here. So if you go to the next slide, Megan. Um, so um, we've done a little bit of, of data gathering, as I said, about uh, who comes to Drupal.org and specifically who hits the front page versus the other areas of the site. And um, 
one of the relatively interesting data points is about 14 out of 15 visitors are anonymous. They're not our authenticated users. They're not our highly engaged community members. They are other people from other uh, walks of life who are evaluating Drupal um, and who are kind of an unheard but very large part of our community. And we want to hear them better and serve them better. Um, so um, we've gathered some data um, using a couple of different tools about our anonymous traffic. And so we understand a little bit better who they are um, and kind of what industry they're in, what uh, area of expertise they're coming from and things like that. So as you can see, um, this table sort of outlines um, those anonymous visitors by their job function and gives some information about the proportion of front page visitors in that job function versus all visitors. So you can see, for example, that all visitors to the site leans heavily towards uh, people who are in engineering or information technology roles, but the proportion of front page visitors has uh, actually quite a high amount of business development, entrepreneurship roles, marketing roles, media and communication, design. Uh, in other words, end users and personas that we haven't historically been serving um, but who are increasingly the decision makers in choosing whether to adopt Drupal. Um, so we now have some uh, hard numbers and we're continuing to gather some more data on that. If you go to the next slide, we have a little bit of information on the, some, some of the specific uh, job titles um, uh, of some of these roles, whether it's people in manager, uh, managerial roles, CXO level, director level, um, in various kinds of departmental roles and things like that. Um, if we keep going, um, so we've done some user research and these were interviews conducted um, uh, in part by Megan, in part by others um, on the team, just uh, talking to various people about what the experience is like coming to Drupal.org. Um, and one of the, some of the consistent themes were, um, you know, we, the, the current front page is covered in calls to action um, because we have, um, you know, promoting the Tri Drupal program, getting the code, uh, coming to DrupalCon, all sorts of uh, industry calls to action, and there's not a certain level of consistency about who those different calls to action are for and what the right path is for any individual evaluator who's coming to the site. Um, we also know that there's a difference in what kind of evaluator experience these different kind of users want. So the technical evaluators want the opportunity to play with Drupal, uh, marketing evaluators want value proposition and demos and uh, and the um, they want to be shown how Drupal will empower them to, uh, to fulfill the business need. Um, so in addition to this research, we did some comparative analysis of just other projects, whether open source or not, software programs and, um, that are out there. So for example, we have Puppet's front page. Um, if we go further, we have uh, the Drupal.com um, uh, persona, um, uh, personas listed out. And more or less, we, we evaluated these, came together, had a, uh, an offsite here in Portland, and, um, and came up with a, a game plan for um, identifying the top three personas and how to serve them on Drupal.org. So the, the next slides are going to be some rough mock-ups. These are not final designs, although I'll show some design comps in a minute, of some changes that are upcoming. So uh, among other things, um, we're changing the top navigation on Drupal.org. We're going to focus on... Um, uh, the answering the question why Drupal by persona. Um, we're gonna uh, we're going to provide more pathways to the kind of information that you might need depending on your evaluator role. Um, we're going to highlight the Tri Drupal program up in the top navigation, and we're going to change the primary call to action on the front page uh, in some form. Uh, to go to the next slide again, Megan, um, to uh, be persona focused. So we want people to identify themselves as, you know, developers or technical users or business users or marketing users or agency users. And, uh, and then we can funnel them into a much more targeted path that will let them know um, uh, the, the information they're really looking for to understand why they want to use Drupal. Um, and we've also identified some uh, metrics to let us know whether we consider that evaluator to have converted um, so, for example, our, our conversion metrics for a developer evaluator would be things like whether they've spun up a Tri Drupal instance or another sandbox as we develop uh, further demo experiences, or whether they've simply downloaded the software. Um, for the marketers uh, and business users, whether they've viewed um, videos or whether they've gone to the uh, contact page, which tries to connect them with supporting partners like yourselves. And for the agency users, whether they've um, uh, downloaded resources that we provide like the um, CXO report and other things that we gathered throughout the year uh, to provide back out to the community and to try and help a 
uh, business decide to, um, uh, to make its bet on Drupal. Um, so to give a little bit more color, um, here are some early, actually, you know, well-designed mocks <laughs> of what the, uh, the new front page experience could look like. Um, and these are still very early, um, but we're going to have some, a much more um, simple uh, design, many fewer uh, calls to action, probably fewer still than even you see here. Um, some animation to draw the eye and draw attention. Um, and then the segmentation into the three primary um, personas that we want to target. Um, so, and if you go to the next slide, we'll continue with the rest of the page, um, continuing to feature case studies, um, uh, point people to how to get involved in the community and provide some stats about uh, the project. So that's still very much a work in progress. This is definitely a sneak preview, uh, but we hope to be showing off more about this uh, coming up at Nashville. Um, in the meantime, we've done a few small things. As Men Megan mentioned earlier, um, we put up the uh, video that was generously put together by Acquia to uh, promote uh, Drupal and some of the brands and stories and um, great success stories uh, for the Drupal project. Um, and that's been a, a really interesting experiment in, um, in putting more, more sizzle on the front page, as we've been saying internally, and more um, kind of marketing-oriented material. And we're going to continue experimenting with other things like that. Um, I'm going to switch over now to some other initiatives, not specifically related to our persona work, but just related to other things we've been doing on Drupal.org. So for example, um, we are trying to be more inclusive with our sign-up process on the front page. So we have uh, provided uh, a new field to uh, ask people to identify with uh, uh, underrepresented communities based on their um, self-assessment of whether or not they're a part of those communities to give us more information about our community and areas where we can do better. Um, we have also uh, worked with CORE, as Megan referred to earlier, to propose four initiatives in the ideas queue. And um, I'll try and be brief because Megan has talked about most of these. One was the automatic, automatic updates initiative initially proposed by Dries at DrupalCon Vienna, the site builder and project browser tool, telemetry in Drupal core to give us that information about how Drupal is actually being used. And lastly, a communication channel in core. Because again, we know that 14 out of 15 Drupal.org visitors don't register for an account, don't log in, um, are not people who are regularly in our communication channels, even though we have such a large community and it feels like we must be talking to everyone. There's actually a large number of people who we may not reach. And so we want to create this channel within core to reach those, those end users of Drupal who are maybe not engaged with the community yet. Um, so that's an, an, an additional proposal as well. Um, in the meantime, we've been doing some things, uh, uh, never forgetting the developer experience. Um, so um, we've added some in-context explanation for what issue tags mean for contributors so they understand what the state of something is as core is reviewing their work. Um, and we've been um, working on making Drupal.org more performant and better protected on the web. So if you go to the next slide, Megan, we've recently partnered uh, with Perimeter X, um, which is a sort of bad bot protection, um, bad actor protection service that integrates with our CDN. Um, we actually get targeted in denial of service tax almost bi-monthly. Um, so it's something that the team has been sort of dealing with in the background. And I'm kind of proud to say that it has almost no visible impact on uh, end users of the site um, and hasn't for, for several years now. But um, we're always trying to find ways to make that more robust um, to better protect the community's home and to make sure that um, those people who are contributing to the projects just don't, uh, aren't disrupted in their work. Um, finally, we've done a little bit of work, um, uh, more work on Drupal CI and working with Core. Um, there's a lot of effort to make um, better tools for uh, adding JavaScript to uh, Drupal, whether that's focusing on perhaps making React a, a standard framework in Drupal Core, or just focusing on the regular JavaScript um, interactions that we already have. Uh, so to do that, to support that, um, we've had to update the testing system. Uh, what we used before to test the JavaScript code in Drupal Core was PhantomJS. That was deprecated by its maintainer, so we've moved it to Chrome WebDriver and supported a few new um, JavaScript-related testing suites to help um, really evolve the front end and the user interaction experience of Drupal and work with Core to move in that direction as that's one of their uh, strong priorities. Um, and that's pretty much the update for D.O. All right, great. That's a lot of work. That's how it goes before DrupalCon. Uh, well, are there any questions coming in? 
nothing in the chat so far, but if you do have questions, anyone on the call, please feel free to use the chat window to drop them in. And I, or maybe Rachel, will, will call them out if we see them. So okay. far, it looks like we're good. All right, excellent. Well, we uh, certainly appreciate your time and interest in the work that we're doing here at the Drupal Association, and we just couldn't do it without your support. So, um, and it's important that we stay aligned with what the communities, what the community needs. So feel free to send us an email and, and say, hey, have you thought about this? Or, you know, we're really seeing this need out there. I didn't see it on your roadmap. You know, go ahead and, and tell us those things because we're really listening and trying to prioritize where we can make the biggest impact. Um, and in the meantime, you can stay informed of our plans. Uh, we have our uh, Drupal Association newsletter, so you can sign up for that and follow us on Twitter. And of course, you can reach out to your account managers, Delona and Mark, at any time. And we're pretty accessible too. You can always call me. All right, well then, with that, I say thank you. And I look forward to giving you another update next quarter. Thank you, everyone.